Good afternoon and uh, welcome to Medicate Academy's blog. Uh, I'm your host, Bob, and today in the, the studio, I suppose you could call that, the virtual studio, we've got an old friend of mine, Sophia Hirumatsu, who uh, basically is one of the directors, one of the pioneers of educating PAs through a company called Medicate Education. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're really pleased to be partners, I guess you could say. Um, in, in helping PAs develop and become good, safe clinicians. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. So I, I, if I can go back a little bit, I remember you when you were a student at the University of Birmingham and um, you qualified, obviously, and you set up this company, Matrix, which I actually saw on LinkedIn a couple of years ago and with a view to giving Matrix a call. But you preempted that by giving me a call and saying, Bob, I've got a company called Matrix. <laughs> Would you like to do some work? And I said, yes. And then it went from there. So the, the idea, let's go back, the idea for Matrix, where did that, where did that come from, Sophia? So the idea, I think, kind of just um, started when I was actually still in my second year of university and I just kind of felt a little bit um, not very catered for as a PA student. Um, I just felt like it was kind of just made the norm that we have to just use medical student resources, which is not a big deal. Um, it was okay at the time, but I just felt like there needed to be something specifically for PAs. Um, and, you know, it's, it's like if nurses have their own things, physios have their own things, why is it that PAs are just expected to use medical student um, resources? I understand there is an overlap between our learning, but I just felt like it would be better to have our own resources tailor-made for our own profession. So that's where the idea kind of stemmed from. Um, I, when I was in second year revising for my I think it was um, my written exams and I was using some medical resources and my fiance at the time he was actually learning how to code and he asked me do you have any ideas of what I should make or kind of start to develop and I was like I actually would really like an app for myself to be able to revise properly um, and that is kind of interlinked with my curriculum as a physician associate so then I just gave him the idea and he just started cracking <laughs> um, he just started cracking on it and then through the process uh, I essentially just kind of just guided him, told him what everything that I knew at the time anyway about the PA curriculum and how it's you know, set out and what, what's needed of us. So initially it started um, from the, the app itself and then we branched off into other things. So the app was actually the thing that kicked it off, the idea for the app. Yeah, so the idea of the app was basically the first um kind of product if you will like the first product idea and then kind of everything else like with the OSCE courses and the toolkit they all kind of came just not long after from I guess problems I felt needed solutions which is what as you know yourself businesses do so that's where the rest of those things kind of started from I guess it's quite, it's quite a big step to take, isn't it? To go from a recently qualified PA working in clinic, a GP, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I, I work in... Uh, yeah. With the workload that you have there to decide to run your own business because many people won't take that step. They consider it, you know, difficult. Um, it's too much hassle. Uh, they don't have the time. You know, people make excuses up for not doing these things. So what was it that drove you? You know, because you have to be driven to set up your own business and you have to believe in it. What was it that, that made you do this? I think personally, I just wanted more from... Uh, personally, I just didn't want to just be a PA. I didn't want that to just be my life. 
Um, and that's totally fine if that's what you do want um, from your life. Because I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But personally, I wanted more um, from my life. And as well as that, I, I did face a lot of difficulties on my path as a, during, um, you know, studying on the PA course. And I kind of felt like I, I can't be the only one experiencing these difficulties. So I wanted to make solutions for those difficulties. And I felt like at the time there was nothing really do being done for these issues that I was having. So once we first started, you know, developing the company and putting it together, I just kind of came across an influx of people that were having the same kind of um, difficulties in their studies towards their exams, be it university exams or um, national preparation. So the more people I came across and the more kind of queries and messages that I got about their issues with um, X, Y, and Z as part of their studies for the PA course, I just felt like, I think, you know, I have the resources, I, ca I can make the time, I can do this. And yeah, <laughs> I guess that's where it kind of started. And also, I guess I, I'm someone, I guess you can call me a slashy, like a lot of, I like to do lots of different things and I just can't sit still doing one thing. I, I, I like to do lots of different things. And one of those things was setting up a business to help PAs, both student and qualified. You see, because I'm, I'm of a similar bent anyway. I mean, I, I've got so many strings to my bow and I think I, some people are just like that. We can't sit still yeah. and, yeah. And we want to improve whatever's out there as well and, and help others, because that's the key. It's not just mm -hmm. about making a big name for yourself because that's not what it's about. It's about ensuring that PAs become the best they can be. Exactly. And, yeah. yeah take that step further. Yeah. For like the first, um, I think, year or so of us starting Matrix, I didn't actually put my face to the brand, really. I didn't really post pictures of myself. To be honest, you still haven't. In that I mean, sense. It's a little bit a little bit more now but like previously for the first year I was actually not very comfortable of putting myself out there because I didn't really want to I like I wasn't ready to face criticism I guess because I think every business will face criticism at some point in their journey oh, yeah. so um I was just not like I guess ready to put myself out there and so the first year or so, even with, without me putting myself out there and like kind of putting faces to the brand, we were still getting so much traction and so much, so many queries and people kind of sending in their stories and what they needed help with during their PA studies. So it was actually Aaron, my co-founder, who told me to um, kind of put my face out there and kind of tell people the story that actually um, like was behind Matrix and why I started it. Yeah, I think your personal been... story is always important. The personal story is always important. It's that yeah, personal yeah. Because, yeah. because the students I've met, when we've spoken about your course, so some of your students on your courses, when they've talked to me, they said what they like about it. I said, what attracted you to doing this, like revision course? And they said, well, I like the fact that Sophia was in the same boat as me. So, and, you know, when they've heard your story, that's what drives them to come along and yeah. enroll on the course, which incidentally, I still maintain is very, very cheap for what they're getting. Oh, you know, thank you. No, I'm serious. I'm serious. In the corporate world, yeah. the prices would be triple, even quadruple. Yeah, yeah we know that. So, obviously so i think it's an important point you're obviously not in it for the money um you know well, no. <laughs> it's not you're not going to make a fortune doing what you're doing but yeah. I, think, I think what you get out of it and i might be wrong here is the satisfaction of knowing that those students will go you know what i trained with matrix as well and we were able to hone and develop our skills and fine-tune them 
even if it's only over that weekend and it gives people and this is the thing that's missing i think on a lot of university courses the ability to give people confidence that they can do things yeah it's okay to give them information but actually you know the key to it is having confidence with what you're doing yeah um, which is what i get as an ace when i'm working as an ace that's what i get the feedback is thanks for giving me the confidence to just get it done I, and I think that's what you do. Now, here's a thing, right? I know we don't have a lot of time today and I'm, I'm sort of cutting quickly into things here, but you know what? There's another skill you had to develop. So you, you trained as a PA, so you had to develop clinical knowledge, clinical skill sets. Then you set up a business. So you have to become an entrepreneur, right? There's another skill set, which requires resilience, day-to-day -day motivation when you feel it's going bad. Then there's the other thing performance skills you had to become a performer didn't you tell us about that so as in performer in in what sense to the to the audience which is your <laughs> students we're all when we're teaching yeah. we're performing yeah 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 so, I'm tell, me about that. tell me about that journey because don't forget you've had to develop skills as a performer yeah. as somebody yeah. who's a speaker i a teacher a speaker it's a performer to me yeah 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 so yeah i remember my first course that we actually did yeah i think you remember as well i do i do i do <laughs> the first course that we did for free just to see if we were even capable of delivering something like this and i was i don't know if i'm allowed to say any words but i was scared <laughs> Yeah, you were, you were. I, was, I, I was, you coming I was to me. very, very scared um, to teach and felt like I'd be judged. Um, you know, I only recently, I guess, finished my national exams. But I think the fact that I set that, sat that exam three times, I felt like I had enough experience to talk about it. I've sat that exam three times. So if there's anyone that has enough like information or experience to talk about, it would be me because I've sat that exam so many times and I found what worked and what didn't work. And we wanted to speak about our courses and I wanted to make sure it's important that we speak about what doesn't work as well, because um, I feel like that's something that isn't spoken enough about um, in general, like at university courses or whatever. Um, so yeah I mean I was very scared at first but um the students that we did the first course with they were so grateful they were so supportive and even though it was a small group at the time I think it was about eight or nine people um in a, basement, in a basement in Tottenham <laughs> under the ground <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah it was like there was no natural light <laughs> at all it was um, the atmosphere was good and it, it felt like everybody was in the same boat yeah. and i remember you coming to me and saying how am i doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was like ah, i don't know how yeah. I'm doing. mark and myself yeah. are seasoned performers we've been doing this all our lives 30 years in front of people uh and you know we said to you and we really meant it at the time you've done a great job the yeah. nerves didn't come through at all you knew your material and yes, it was it was new. The whole thing was new. Yeah. It was new for us to be involved with you guys because, um, you, you know, an unknown quantity, basically. Yeah, um, yeah. And the students were really supportive. They enjoyed the course. Yeah, the very we got, remember, we get feedback about you, you know, from the students because we, we were like, uh, what do you think of the course so far? And it was like, this is brilliant. This is what we needed. It's really helped me feel comfortable working with people, taking histories more effectively, you know, and I said, and tomorrow you've got other skills you're going to learn, hands-on skills, you know, procedures. Yeah. And I was like, oh, and I couldn't believe you were managing to cram so much into that period, but it works. It works. Yeah, it works. yeah it's like when we take feedback now, because um, we still have regular feedback, take regular feedback from our students because we're never like I've never said the course is going to be like ever perfect and like I always want to improve it to the best capability and the feedback that we usually get is we want more we want the day <laughs> we want the course to be longer we want more of it because right. we want it, we yeah. it so much which is it's like great but you know at the same time you have to like only do so much in a 
a, a couple of days. There's only so much like I can physically <laughs> do, basically. Mm -hmm. And, and I mean, you're running more and more courses now. Obviously, the COVID thing sort yeah. of slowed things down a little bit, but it didn't stop you really, did it? Because once you had, uh, we were given sort of permission, I guess, to yeah. be able to use PPE and work with students again, yeah. um, you were able to get back in the driving seat. And uh, yeah. just a slightly bigger venue, you, uh, you know, people actively using PPE and being medical style students, that was easy. There wasn't a problem with that because we've always followed certain guidelines anyway on cleanliness and hygiene. Um, so it wasn't a big step. But the students embraced that, didn't they? And got into it. I mean, I think you were fully booked up straight away. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. It was yeah. So 2020 was the first year that we just we booked up the whole year um, quite few months in advance and I think that is that is actually partly down to the pandemic as well um we didn't like advertise extra and we didn't kind of go crazy with the marketing we were just continuing to do what we usually have always have done with our marketing for the courses and I think it was a combination of students feeling really a bit scared maybe unprepared um, but then at the same time, I felt like universities were not doing enough to prepare their students. Um, I, I spoke to students that just had maybe online few lectures here and there, all their placements cancelled. You know, I spoke to students that were expected to sit there, OSCEs with no mocks. It was just, I felt like a letdown from some universities, not all of them. I think some universities did prepare their students quite well. Um, I think, but yeah. some of them I just personally felt were atrocious in terms of their helping the students, like preparing for these really important exams. It was just like, they were just taking their money, like nine grand, but what are they getting for that nine grand? I mean, our course is 250 pounds. So it's like, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I, mean, I come from an era when we didn't pay for education uh, and, it, you know, it was grant. It was a grant and you didn't have to pay it back, um, which is my personal political stance on that is it should be free anyway. The same as the NHS, it should be free at source. And things have changed and not for the best. And um, because we have this idea now that you pay for the course, then I think it's only right that you should demand a higher quality product. 100%. Uh, because you are paying for it. <laughs> um, that's another topic altogether and, and sensitive and political, but I'm very much on the side of the students who, you know, who sort of say, well, I really didn't get any support. That's not true of all universities. I'm working alongside uh, two universities who wholeheartedly backed me up when we jumped in when the pandemic started in April. And by the end of April, we were running OSCE training and OSCEs online with Wolverhampton and Chester. And these are fairly small universities when you consider some of the big ones just closed everything down. It was like no word, no statements, just close the course down virtually. We've still got your money, but we're closing you down. Mm -hmm. And I think that that was despicable. And I think this is where there's a room for people like us you know, the small people, to be able to go, we have the expertise, we have the contacts and the resources, let's start putting it out to the students. And I think that's yeah. what Matrix did and still does and continues to do really well, which moves me on to the next thing. There's a sort of an expansion of Matrix here because you've now got people working for you, clinicians who are teaching for you. Yeah, yeah, so... Um... How have you, because that, as a, as a business owner... I've had a, I've chatted to you about this. It's like, ooh, I've got to take my hands off the wheel and yeah. leave somebody else in charge. Of my, how, how's that working out? So um, we've just like kind of finished with interviews and done a couple of shadowed teaching. So that's when the people that I've interviewed and I felt like you know they could be potential good like kind of replacements uh, for me at the Oscar <laughs> classes. Um, and they've come in and they've done a couple of shadow teaching, which is when I watch them and they've been really good. And it's just like kind of a, for me, it was a little bit of a weight lifted off my shoulders yeah. because for the last, you know, year or two, it's, it's just been me like every weekend. Everything's you. 
Uh, yeah, like in terms of the OSCE course teaching, it's just been me getting up, doing all that preparation, checking me how all, all Aaron did, all Aaron did was go and get cups of tea and coffee for us. <laughs> yeah. Well, Aaron's more like, you know, all of all with the app team, but cups like, is, yeah. in know, terms of in terms of the OSCE course, it was just me. And it was getting too much for me to kind of just do all on my own. So um I just we did all the maths, we did the calculations, and you're like, okay we might actually lose a little bit of money in the beginning, but we need to hire more people um, to, for not just making sure that like, you know, we're able to expand the business, but also so for my physical and mental health and well being. <laughs> Cause you know, like you said at the beginning, like I also work in GP, I do locum shifts, I do other things outside even the PA world like yeah. photography and web design now so it's like I needed help in that sense so um now we've just taken on four um new OSCE tutors and leads so leads would be the people that run the OSCE course do all the things that people don't really think about that actually take a lot of effort like you know, make sure it runs to time, make sure all the equipment's there, make sure all the students have received their, like, venue confirmation, make sure the patient, uh, students get their, like, feedback, uh, make sure the mock that we have on day two runs to time and efficiently and that there's no issues, like, all these things I've appointed um, four new uh, PAs to do. And, and I've seen one of them. Yeah. I've seen one of them performing, and she's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, not as good, as, not as good as you, obviously. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's but like even even if they weren't as good as me, I mean, I think Charlie's great. But even if they were, no, um, that's not a problem. That's why it's so important to have training for your mm. staff, um, and that's why what we do at Matrix as well. We we're not expecting you to come on board and just be perfect. It doesn't work like that because when I started, I was a, nowhere near perfect so it's yeah we, we want to like constantly improve our our staff as well I guess <laughs> which you are doing so you see these are the things that are going on behind the scenes so when people turn up on these courses or hear about them yeah. they don't understand what actually goes into the amount of time you have to invest in in running a business behind the scenes time and you know, <laughs> it's crazy isn't it because yeah. Like when I when I set up Medicare, um, I had to have a business partner because there was too much to do for one person. Yeah. Because like like you, I've got lots of other things I'm doing as well, and I enjoy doing. And you know, to keep me stable and the person I am, I have to do lots of different things. Oh yeah, 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 hundred percent. Yeah. I, so I when I tell my friends like I'm you know I'm I'm doing a web design thing now, like I'm I'm really getting into. <laughs> They're like, what? Like, where did that even come from? Like, is that's not even to do with PA? Like, why are you doing it? And I'm just like, because I enjoy it. I, I like to do it for fun. <laughs> I like to do it for fun. Exactly. Just like, I am, I am creating like a little bit of a business from it, and I want, want to make an income from it one day. But I'm initially doing it because I enjoy doing it, and that's the same. Same with my photography as well, which I started, well, I've been doing since before I even knew the PA profession existed. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so, whilst you were doing all of this, teaching, working, coming up with new ideas, chasing new things like photography, web design and so on, you also, and I should have prepared this, but I haven't. Um, <laughs> Here it so, comes. Well, <laughs> So, right, Sophia Hiramatu, where the hell did you get time to write this? <laughs> so, um, I started that, well, the idea for that book um, came into my head when I was actually revising for my national exams. Um, right. The Physician Associate National Exams, and I was working with um, a registrar, GP registrar at the time, now good friend, unqualified GP. And he was using this book to revise for his CSA, which is the exam that GPs need to sit, well, 
doctors need to sit in order to become a fully qualified GP. So yeah. I, I was like, and he, he was using it. And I was like, I just wanted to have a look at it. And I, I found it very, very helpful. Even though I'm not a GP, I just found it very, I really liked the layout of it. It was very um, clear, consistent. And I was like, I need to make something like this for PAs because if I had this book when I was a student, I think it would help me. And also even as a qualified PA as well, um so I actually ordered the book just to kind of revise from it I didn't order it to look at it and like you know I want to write a book too I just ordered it to revise for my own exam and then I literally just scribbled all over it like I used it so much um and then it was really interesting the author of that book delivered the book personally to my house which did not expect it just happened I found out that the author lived like a 10 minute drive from my house so um I thanked him for the book and then I was like I really like it when you know we got it and I was like can we actually make one for PAs and get you on board so it was um Muhammad Akonji who who wrote the CSA symptom solver and he was like yeah sure let me know what you want to what you want to put together so um, that's how Primary Care for Physician Associates was born, basically. And of course, you can buy, can you buy this on Amazon? Yes, you can buy it on Amazon. Um, but we printed, we printed 200 and, well, 250 copies um, for me to just sign and, I guess, post to people, which I'm posting myself at the post office. But I know anyway. I got my copy and like the postman had a hernia. Which yeah. actually mentioned in here, so we were able. To... <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I was shocked at how 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 because I know how busy you are. How quickly you got this thing together? I mean, you've got the you've got the the website. You've got, I mean, the apps are amazing. Um, you know, and you've got a book. Sorry, uh, you've got Aaron coming in there. Oh, Aaron, and he's got flowers for me. Oh my god. Oh, the, uh, those for me, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Thank isn't you. that lovely? Uh, and this is Aaron, ladies and gentlemen. He's <laughs> now for the development of the app and also for the production of flowers. This is the first podcast I've done where I've received flowers. That's so yeah, nice. This is for you. This is for you. Oh, isn't that lovely? Thanks so much, Sophia. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's the great thing about doing podcasts uh, and we are definitely keeping that in <laughs> yeah sure <laughs> yeah no no so um you know it's a it's a hell of a journey when you look at it and i mean you know if you go back what is it three years mm -hmm. a lot has happened in three years hasn't it yes um... did you expect did you expect it to move so quickly? No, not at no. all. Um, it, I mean, I, you know, I, I did get a lot of help and support from Aaron. Um, but I think we've just, because of our consistency, I think that's what's kind of really contributed to our growth, I guess. Yeah. It's just the consistency and kind of not making excuses and just getting up and getting on with things and which and you know I, I'm a human being like there are days where I wake up and I'm just like I don't want to move from my bed I don't want to do anything I don't even want to go to work I'm just like I just want to stay in bed but you know we all have those days but most of the time I think because I really enjoy it um, I enjoy making content I enjoy creating things for PA students and I think the, my favorite the favorite thing for me about it like the main driving factor for myself is when um it's uh it's results day so when PA students get their results when they've passed their exams and the just the emails and the influx of thank you messages that that's that's the main thing for me to keep going because of all these um 
we just went shopping um because um because of all the, the the thank you messages that I get and because there are days where I've like you know maybe felt like you know am I doing the right thing like there are because I've got criticism quite a bit of criticism for setting up matrix you know I've, I've had people tell me like who do you think you are you're not experienced enough um you're exploiting people because you're charging too much at your courses oh, no, I've had too- people I had people like literally say terrible things which aren't even true but I don't know if they want to say it to make themselves feel better I don't know what it is but people that have made me for a second doubt myself only for a second let's just yeah. that yeah. twisted. only for a second made me doubt myself but then when I get those thank you messages like that doubt is just completely chucked out the window it's like I'm 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 contributing to people's lives (laughs) I guess in a sense and yeah and they're happy and um we we get results that's why we've recently made our um OSCE course we now give a money back guarantee if you don't pass your OSCEs after sitting or after attending one of our Oscar courses in the same season if you don't pass you get your money back so uh, I mean like we're, we're kind of I mean we've, we've been able to do that because we're so confident in our course and our high pass rate like we we know what we're doing we've been doing it for a couple of years now and that's why we offer that now because where most people that pass, uh, most people that attend the course pass. <laughs> so, why, so we're able to see you, Yeah, when you really believe in what you're doing. Yeah. And the, and the results show that. Yeah. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what criticism you get. I mean, Edison was told many, many times that he wouldn't be able to, you know, you can't build a light bulb. That's ridiculous. Mm. And he just, he, if he'd taken any notice, we wouldn't have light bulbs. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, we wouldn't have, yeah. we wouldn't have, have put people on the moon we wouldn't be flying if it wasn't for people who ignore the haters ignore the critique you know the critics and 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 if you're absolutely sure that you're doing the right thing it i think certainly in my experience it does succeed no matter what no matter what people throw at you you just stick to your you know stick to your beliefs stick to the program as it were and and be resilient and just get on with it yeah, yeah, that's exactly. It's been able to get up in the morning. It's been able to get up in the morning and go, yeah, let's do it again yeah. and again and again. <laughs> and it's great. That's exactly what it is, getting up in the morning. And well, for myself, I think it's really important to have like a really good um, like morning routine. Um, like kind of just, I like to start the day slow, um, you know, and then after I've kind of had the morning to myself, plan my day, uh, maybe do some yoga, meditation, like a really nice, smooth start to the morning. I think that makes a massive difference because it really helps even when I'm not feeling particularly motivated. Um, those kind of little things, I actually wake up, I look forward to them. So yeah, I think another thing, having a really good morning routine helps as well. Day in the life of, of Sophia Hiramatsu. <laughs> 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 we'll have to do a separate blog post on that yeah. lifestyle. Yeah, the lifestyle of a busy PA, you know, and company director. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got to close this, obviously, now. Um, and I'm going to sort of put you on the spot here and sort of say, right, if you had any advice to give to PAs who are in their second year and they feel they're struggling, right, Obviously, come on one of the courses, but that, that, that goes without saying. Um, what, 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 what advice would you give? I think um, the main thing I would say is find what works for you. So right. what I mean by that is just because your friends are doing thousands of questions every day doesn't mean you have to do the same thing. Everyone learns and remembers things in different ways. Like for myself, when I was a second year, I loved to draw. And so I did lots of mind maps and I was able to remember things more efficiently like that and then kind of supplement that with my questions, I guess. Um, so I think the main thing I'd say is find something that works 
for you and just continue to do that and obviously then you you not only will feel less stressed but you will enjoy um the PA course a lot more and try not to overwhelm yourself with lots of information because there's loads of like resources and information out there just find what works for you um, if that's matrix that's amazing if it's not that's also okay it's just find what works for you so Sophia Hiromatsu the difference that makes the difference yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice strap line for you so, okay I'd like to say thanks very much I know we've got to keep it short today because you've got a busy day ahead of you, even though it's a bank holiday Monday. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> this is the whole This is it. This is it. <laughs> oh, isn't it? Okay. Um, and you've got flowers and groceries, so you're going to have a lovely day. Um, again, like I say, I want to thank you for coming on and taking the time up. I know you're busy. Pleasure. Absolute pleasure. I would love to come again. Yeah, well, we'll do it again. We'll do it again. I'm sure there's lots of specific areas that people would like to have more in-depth discussion on today was just an overview yeah yeah sure you know we can talk about lots of different aspects of the PA course and it would be interesting to see if anybody sort of sees this and sort of says actually why don't you talk about this Sophia I want you to talk about this with Bob and we can come on again and put together a whole series of little mini talks about, yeah, about, about being a PA you know yeah. I think that's a great idea well yeah. done Bob <laughs> I'm full of good ideas um, so I'm going to be seeing you on Saturday for yeah. your London course yes yeah I'm really uh, looking forward to coming down to Kensington and parking yeah. next to a Ferrari <laughs> not yours I must add not yours oh my um, afraid no <laughs> and I uh, just want to thank you and say goodbye and I'll see you next week I will. See you soon. Take care. See you soon, Sophia. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.